Today we're going to make multiple concurrent progress bars that are all updated by individual threads. Hey, welcome back everybody. I hope you're doing well. So I recently posted a video about progress bars. Check it out, link in the description if you missed it. I was talking about why progress bars are hard to get right or at least hard to get accurate in terms of time. And that video generated a lot of conversation, specifically this comment from Aiden, Eden, Aiden is a great video. I remember getting challenged to draw multiple progress bars for multiple processes running in parallel and couldn't really find a proper solution for it. Idea perhaps for your next video. And it's been a while since we talked about threads and I don't think we've ever talked about ANSI escape sequences. So yeah, let's do it. Multi-threaded concurrent progress bars in the terminal coming right up. This video will definitely include code. As always, that code is available through Patreon. Thank you to all you wonderful people out there who help support this channel. So let's jump into it. Okay, now in this example, I'm gonna simplify things a bit. My last progress bar video involved network downloads and curl. Um, you can actually, I'm doing this in the same directory. So that's this one. Today, I just wanna focus on how we get multiple progress bars and focus on updating them concurrently. And I don't want the code to get too busy. You could easily apply the technique that we're going to look at today to downloads or file copies or any computational task you're interested in watching progress. But today we're just gonna have our progress bars be based on some counters that increment at random or arbitrary speeds. Okay, so this is the code that I'm going to start out with right here, okay? Pretty simple. It just creates a single progress bar that increments as time advances. So I have this update bar function here that prints out the progress bar and uses the carriage return like we did in the last video here to reset, basically to bring things back, bring the cursor back to the start of the line each time, which gives us this nice grow in place effect. Notice that we don't have a new line here down at the bottom. And then I call that down here in main. But of course, today I do want to have multiple threads running multiple progress bars. So let's just add before I forget, let's say we want a number of threads. It could also be number of bars and we're gonna set it to five. We'll just do five progress bars for today. We could easily change it and we'll be able, when we're done with this, we'll be able to change that number to whatever number you want. It should be fine. Now, just to be clear, you don't have to use multiple threads in order to have multiple progress bars. We could do this with select on multiple connections. We could use an event-driven model instead. I'm just using threads today because I think it's a common way to do this and it's gonna be straightforward and help you understand what I'm doing. Also note that we could use the curses library. I'm not going to, not because I don't love curses, Versus you all know I do because I've used it in several other videos, but because I thought it was a good opportunity to show you some of the things, basically how Curses does some stuff under the hood, things like how does it move the cursor around? Because Curses is just a library, so like how does it actually do things? Well, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea. So let's jump down into main and here down here, we're gonna create some threads. Okay, so if you haven't seen threads before, check out some of my other videos uh, that takes you through some of this. For this video, I'm going to assume that you've at least seen some threads. Basically though, it's just a thread is just something that allows you to have two things happening concurrently in your programs. So I'm gonna use the pthreads library. Let's create some pthread underscore t variables and we'll call them threads and we're going to have num threads. That's the number we're gonna have. Okay, so these are gonna be our threads. And then let's just come down here and have a for loop that's going to create a bunch of threads. And then down here in the for loop, we're going to call pthread create and we're gonna pass in the address of our, of each thread struct and then null because we're not actually changing any of the attributes. We're going to need then a function for our thread, a thread function. So I'm just gonna call this my thread func. Um, we'll write that later. It doesn't currently exist. And we'll probably are going to, uh, probably gonna end up passing in arguments, but for now, I'm just gonna leave this as null. Because first let's go up and try to make this my thread func function, just keep everything kind of balanced as we go. So it needs to return a void pointer. It's just the specification for pthreads. It's pretty common actually, but uh, my thread func, so, and we're gonna have an argument that we pass in. So yeah, so typically among threading libraries and definitely for pthreads, you are taking in a void pointer and you're returning a void pointer. This allows you to be pretty general. You can pass in just about anything you want and return just about anything you want. And what we're gonna do in these threads eventually, once I add the code here, 
is we're going to count up to something. And then for now, let's just return null. Um, we don't really need to return anything. Uh, I may come back and change that later, but actually maybe forever we'll just return null. Okay, so we're going to need a counter that keeps track of our progress. And my main thread is also going to need to be able to update my progress bar. So I wanna actually add some data here, right? We, we need some communication. We need a data structure of some kind. It's gonna keep track of the progress and the work that needs to be done by each of the individual threads. So what I'm gonna do, let's come up here and let's just make a, a quick struct. And we're gonna call this struct uh, thread info, because it's going to keep track of the information that we need for each individual thread. And I'm just gonna make an integer called count to val. That's gonna be the value that we're gonna count up to. And we're gonna vary that. That's how I'm gonna sort of change the speed at which they progress. This is gonna be the amount of work that needs to be done. And then we're gonna have another one, uh, another int called progress. That's basically how close to this count to val we are. And then let's, while we're at it, let's just put the p thread underscore t variable actually in here here. So that way we can just kind of keep it all in one place because I think that'll keep things a little better organized. Now let's jump back down to main and we got to change a few things now that we've made this struct. So instead of p thread underscore t, I'm going to make a uh, info, thread info struct, a bunch of them here. And now inside the loop for each of these, there's a few more things we need to do. Like we're going to say, so threads i, each thread, let's set its count to val variable to be some random number. I don't want to get too huge, but let's just for now, let's just say it goes from zero up to 9,999. I may have to change that later, but I think it'll work okay. And then let's set the progress to be zero because we haven't really done anything yet. And then down here, let's just change this up to pass in our the thread member there. Okay, so we'll just pass in the address of that. And then down here, I do wanna change one more thing and that is I actually wanna pass in the thread struct just because that's gonna allow the function to update the individual thread struct, so the counters. Basically, it's just gonna move the progress along. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Now I want to run up back up to my thread function and have it actually do something. Okay, so the first thing we need is we're passing in a void pointer, but it's not really like we it actually has type and we know what type it is. So let's just come in here and make a pointer called t info. And I'm going to assign that to be arg. Now I'm doing this just because of course, arg is void, and I want to have type associated, I want to be able to use this thing. Now we could have just cast it whenever we wanted to use it, but that would be really annoying. And I think this will keep things a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now let's do some counting in here, we're going to say, basically, at the beginning, Beginning, beginning of our loop, we're going to say t info start t info progress equals zero. So I guess technically we didn't even need to initialize it down there because we'll just do it here. T info progress. We're basically going to loop as long as t info progress is less than t info count to val. So we're going to count up to that value. And then each time through, let's increment our progress member. And then inside here, because I don't want this to happen blazing fast, so fast that we can't see what's going on. This is a demo after all, so it's good to see things. So let's just add a little bit of sleep here. I'll sleep for about a millisecond. We'll see, maybe I have to make that a little bit longer or shorter to adjust the timing so you can see it, but I think that'll work. So I'm just gonna, we'll stick with that for now. Okay, and then let's bring this back. Okay, so now we have our five threads and each thread is going to increment its counter. So now we just need to do the progress bar, which is the whole point. I mean, that's the whole point of this video. It's not to show you how to count up to some random number, right? So I'm thinking I'll come down here and make and I want to update the progress bar down here like I was doing before. Now, there are a few different ways that we could do this, but this one will work. I'm basically just going to have the main thread wait for everything to be done. And then while it waits, it will update the progress bar. So right here, I want to start by creating a new variable called done. We're going to start out as false, okay? That's going to keep track of when we're actually done. I'm no longer just going to count in here. We're going to have a while loop here. And I'm just going to say as long as we're not done, then we're going to loop, okay? And now at the beginning of every time through the loop, I'm going to set done is equal to true, okay? So the, why did I do this? Basically because then I'm going to check to see each of the progress bars as I update them. And we're going to see if one of them's not done. And if it isn't, then we'll set it back to false. Okay, so now inside here, I'm going to go through each of my threads. So int i equals zero, 
i is less than num threads and i plus plus okay okay so here we're just going through our individual threads and what we're going to do is we want to update the thread but instead of just like giving it a number because now we have multiple threads that are updating bars i want to tell it which one which progress bar we're looking at so let's say threads i we're just going to pass in this whole thing and i am going to have to make some changes to the function up above but for now we'll just deal with the fact that it, this code doesn't work yet so now in here we just want I have one little check here that says if the threads, if the i threads progress is less than the i threads uh, threads count to val. So basically, if we're not done yet, right? If we're not done, then done equals false. Okay. And then of course, we'll still leave this micro sleep down here just because we don't want to be checking all the time and updating constantly. That's going to just burn a lot of CPU. We want to just periodically update these progress bars. And by periodically, I mean about every 10 milliseconds. So still faster than our eyes can see, but we don't want it to be ridiculously fast. So at this point, this should work pretty well. Let's just go up. So what I need to do is come up to the update bar function here and said, I'm not passing in a, a integer anymore. I'm basically passing in a thread info pointer, call this T info. And then down here, we're just going to change things up a little bit. Okay. We're not passing in a number between zero and one. We need to actually compute what the percentage done is. And so for this, I'm just going to, let's, let's take T info, let's take our progress number, and we're going to multiply it by 100 and divide it by the count to val number. Okay, so this right here is going to give us a number from 0 to 100. And then down here, we basically can just multiply by the progress bar length and divide again by 100. And we should be good to go. And now at this point, we should have a program that works, sort of. I mean, let, let's comp let, let's just look at what it does so far. Let's compile it, make sure I haven't made any mistakes. Notice that my make file still adds libcurl, but we're not actually using libcurl. So this for multibar could be removed entirely, but we'll just leave it for now. So, but if we run it, you basically are going to see we've got, it looks like a progress bar, like just a single progress bar and it's updating and that's great, but we wanted multiple progress bars. So this isn't really what we're looking for. And the question is why, like, why didn't we get multiple progress bars? We told it to update all these progress bars. But the reason is, is that like before, like we're basically, every time we update it, we're kicking it back to the beginning with a carriage return back to the beginning of the line. And so each of our progress bars is just running over the top of each other. They're basically clobbering each other. And what we wanted was to see all of them updating concurrently. So how do we do that? Well, you recall that we set the cursor back to the start of the line using the carriage return. I mentioned that already and we didn't put the new line here. Okay, so that made it easier to reset. And so we actually want to remove some of this, right? So I actually want to remove this and I actually do want to go to the next line, right? I do actually want to move to the next line after each of my progress bars, but I still want them to look like they're updating in place. Okay, so how do we do that? Because if I do this, if I just run this really quick, then you're going to see, I mean, you sort of see this update that's happening, but if you're getting way more bars than five, right? You're getting this big, long output. And uh, so each time that we update, update, it's just giving us more. And so, yeah, so you just get this huge number of progress bars that get printed out. And that's not what we wanted. We wanted them to be updated in place. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, for this, we're going to use ANSI escape sequences. And I know that may sound a little bit complex. It's not too complicated. Basically back in the old days, your terminal wasn't just a window on your machine. There were no windows. There was just, well, you'd go out and you'd actually buy a piece of hardware that was a video terminal that physically plugged into your computer. And each of these different terminals manufacturers got tired of the limitations of pure serial output. So as they tried to get fancy, they each started adding special features to allow programmers to do fancier things with their output like move the cursor around to arbitrary locations. But the problem was that they were all different on different terminals. And so the ANSI escape sequences are an attempt to standardize them, envisioning a world where all terminals behave roughly the same. Naturally, like most things in computing, the dream is not quite 100% reality, but it's pretty good. So most terminals out there can do what I'm about to do. So how does it work? Well, if we look at an ASCII table right here, you notice that there are all these non-printable control characters. You've probably seen that before if you looked at an ASCII table, but you don't see one that says move back a bunch of lines, right? What you do see is this escape character, this 033 in octal or 1B in hex. This is the beginning of the rabbit hole, folks. If I print out one of these escape characters, what I'm doing is I'm telling the terminal whatever comes next is not normal text, it's something special. 
special. It's an escape sequence. And there are a lot of different things that can come after an escape character. You can change colors, you can reset the terminal, and I'm definitely not going to give an exhaustive list here. I leave you to explore all the details and the documentation, but we're going to use two commands. The first is going to move up one or more lines, and the second is going to backspace one character. Okay, I just wanna show you how these each work. So let's first go to our update bar function, and you know, I already added my new line back in. I can actually remove this F flush now because the new line is going to cause standard out to flush anyway. And now what I wanna do is basically do something down in main to basically reset each time I go through this loop, right? So down here, basically after I've updated all of these threads of these progress bars, after I update all my progress bars, what I really want is if we're not done, right? If we didn't finish, if there was still room, still work left to do in each of these threads, then what we're gonna do here, we're gonna basically say, if we are not done, then I want to reset. I want to reset the cursor back to the beginning. So we overwrite it again. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here and just bear with me, I'm going to write something that may look a little bit confusing. We're going to put 033. That's our escape character. And then this left square bracket five and F like this. Now, one of the things I don't really love about escape sequences is that they're kind of difficult to read. Like when you look at this, you go, Oh, I know what that does. No, you don't. Nobody ever did that. I mean, there's somebody out there that has them all memorized, but it's not me. And so let's go through what this is actually doing. And then I'm going to try to make things a little bit easier to read in a second. So the first one, let's talk about the 033. This is the escape. It's I'm just giving the octal value. I could have given the hex value, but convention, usually I see the octal value for one reason or another. I'm not really sure why. And so I'm going to stick to that because I think it gives people who are used to seeing escape characters, it gives them what they expect to see, what they're used to seeing. This open square bracket that comes next says, this is a command from the CSI group of commands. Okay, now that's not crime scene investigation. It is control sequence introducer. I'm pretty sure it stands for introducer. So, and then the five the com comes next, this five basically modifies the command It's saying like, how this is how many lines we're actually gonna move up because the F command here is telling us we should move up a line. It moves to the beginning of a previous line if it was just F alone, it would move up one line, but I said five F, that means move up five lines. Okay, so these commands are basically saying move up five lines. Now there are two things I don't like about this. The first one is the magic number in here. In case I ever wanna change this from something that's not five, then this is gonna be a problem. So let's quickly just change that, put a percent D in here and put num threads. Okay, so, so that fixes the magic number issue, but now it's probably even less readable than it was. And that's problem two is that it's just not very readable. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's run up to the top and I wanna define a couple of macros that are gonna help make things a little bit easier to follow. Okay, so let's define our escape sequence to be 033. Okay, we saw that before. Then we're going to define our CSI group to be our left square, our open square bracket. And then let's define a couple of commands. So our previous, previous line is gonna be F. And then let's make one more, which is gonna be backspace. And that's actually D, okay? So, and you can look all this up. There's a, there's a lot of documentation about these control sequences. I'll put a link down in the description. But so what, but so what these macros allow me to do pretty simply is if I come back down here, now I can change things up a little bit, basically remove some of this stuff and say escape CSI and then previous line. And personally, I think this is a little bit cleaner. Now we could try to make this even more readable and you could go further and define a previous line function and encapsulate things like that. But for now, I'm gonna consider this good enough. And now each time we go through the loop, if we're not done, we're gonna reset the cursor. And so let's just make sure this works before we move on. So here, now you can see that it is updating it, okay? So this is wonderful where we have, we have concurrently updating progress bars, each moving at their own speed and then printing done when they finish which is great. So now why did I put that backspace command in there? Well, it's really not essential. We could just call it quits at this point, but I did want to just show you one thing is that I just, if you wanted to change the aesthetics a little bit, and let's say that you wanted the front of these bars to have an arrow or something, then what I could do is I could come in here. Let's just go back up to our update bar function. And let's just say right here in the middle before these two is let's say if T info progress is less than T info count to val, then what we're gonna do is we're going to print F, we're gonna add one of these angle brackets. And so that's gonna be like an arrowhead on the front and that'll be kind of fun. 
Okay, so this is gonna work, but it's a little bit problematic because I just made things, I just made my progress bars most of the time one character longer, but then when they're finished, they shorten. And I don't think I really like that. I want them to always stay the same length and I want them to stay the length that I pound to find. So what I really wanna do is replace that last hyphen, the last, the front hyphen in the progress bar. I wanna replace that with the angle bracket. So what I'm gonna do here is just really quick. And actually, I don't need another printf. I was about to make another one, but I don't really need it. I can just say escape CSI backspace. And this is going to basically send the backspace command. So that's going to take me back one. And then we're going to, that's going to add that angle bracket. And that's going to replace that last character, but it's not going to make things longer. Okay, so let's just see how this works. Let's compile it and we'll run it. And now you can see, yeah, that first one, when they're done, the arrow disappears, but while they're going, you can see that it's in progress and that's really nice. And now we just need to add some useful work to this program and beautiful. So I leave the useful work part up to you. So please do like this video if it was useful. I know you don't wanna miss the next one, so subscribe to the channel, please. As I mentioned before, source code's available through Patreon. And until next time, I'll see you later.